and welcome to the Al Atiyah Foundation podcast. My name is Stephen Cole, and today I'm joined by Mr. Stefan Michel. Mr. Michel is the president of Gas, Renewables and Power, an executive committee member at Total Energies. Before being appointed to his current position, Mr. Michel was senior vice president for the Middle East and North Africa, exploration and production, also at Total Energies. So, very warm welcome to you uh, to the Al Atiyah podcast. Thank you, Stefan. Good afternoon, and uh, I'm indeed pleased to be uh, with you today. Oh, it's great. Great to have you. Um, Stefan, you were appointed to your current position just, just very recently, a year ago. And in that time, Total became Total Energies. So uh, tell us more about your new position and perhaps the significance of the name change, uh, as well as perhaps uh, indicating whether or not this is a new direction for Total Energies or a balancing of the name in line with a new portfolio of assets. So a few questions in, all rolled up into one. Yes, as you mentioned, Total uh, has become Total Energies uh, last uh, April. Uh, and the reason is simple. Uh, the energy world is reinventing itself. And, and so because uh, the energy is reinventing itself, the company has to reinvent itself. And uh, behind that, that change of name, there is much more than uh, just uh, uh, what uh, our opponent could say, greenwashing. It's, it's a reality. It's really the idea that we have to transform ourselves in a, a broad energy company, doing oil and gas, as uh, we have been doing nearly for a century, but as well to add to those uh, two energy, oil and gas, power, we, and especially uh, renewable energy, but as well uh, biofuel, biogas, and uh, hydrogen. And so that we want to be able to uh, bring to our customer all those energies with the idea that uh, uh, those, those, those energy need to be at the same time uh, clean, uh, affordable and, uh, and reliable, and the three dimensions are, are key and, and have to work together. Clean because of climate change, and it's quite uh, obvious. Uh, reliable, and it's clear that we see that, uh, especially in this context, the security of supply is something that is very important. Perhaps uh, I've, I've been forgotten a bit, but it's very important. And finally, affordable because we see that uh, in all countries where we work, uh, energy is essential uh, to, uh, to the consumer because it's, it's part of the, of the, of the basic uh, element to, uh, to live. And so the price of energy uh, is absolutely key. And the challenge is clearly to bring those three at the same time. And that's uh, what a company uh, like Total Energies uh, is uh, is trying to do um, as we did in the past, but in a broader way, because with climate change we have to do it in a broader way. Yes, well, I, you you've hit two marks there um, straight away, Stefan. The security of supply, and the whole world is looking at that for obvious reasons, and also price being the key. But w with um, with a new name, often comes a new uh, ambition and your ambition is to be among the world's top five producers of renewable energy by 2030. Um, that's that'll be here very quickly. Can you be can you be certain the company can achieve that in what just eight years? We are not starting from uh, from nowhere. We have been working on that on, on that subject for uh, ten years now. Uh, and uh, and today we have already uh, a, a portfolio of uh, 10 gigawatt of uh, assets, renewable assets already uh, pure producing. We've got them uh, in France, uh, in Europe, in the US, in uh, Latin America, in India, in Asia. So that's already uh, a, a big portfolio that we have been able to uh, to build in. Uh, in a, in a few years, 
And more importantly, we have a, a, a pipe, a pipe of, uh, of uh, future development, uh, both solar project, wind project, uh, onshore uh, and on offshore. And with that pipe that uh, we are currently building, we, we believe that we are able to bring on stream uh, six gigawatt per year uh, in 2022, three, four, five, to reach 35 gigawatt of production by, uh, by 2025. Hmm. And that's a reality and that's something we know we are going to, we are going to do because we are doing it as we speak. <laughs> and then obviously uh, we have what we are going to, to do between 2025 and 2030. And here, our, uh, our ambition is to be able to bring on stream uh, 12 gigawatt, uh, so to double the, the, the speed of, uh, of, uh, of development. Obviously, we are confident that we can keep uh, the initial six, and we have to, uh, to continue to, uh, to grow. And to mm -hmm. do that, uh, we need to, uh, to build on, uh, on those platforms that we have already, uh, as I mentioned, in the US, uh, in India, in Spain. That's the strength of the company. Uh, and we have to invest in, uh, in as well in new countries. And to do that, we have, we have built what we call the, our Renewable Explorer, 50 on them in 50 different countries where total energy is strong, where we were strong because of our oil and gas uh, presence. And we believe that we can uh, develop meaningfully uh, renewable energy. All That's right. one aspect. And the second aspect uh, is the offshore wind. Uh, where uh, we are investing a lot and we have assembled a portfolio of 10 gigawatt of offshore wind today uh, and that will continue to grow. And with, with all that, the existing platforms, the renewable explorer, uh, the offshore wind, then uh, we are convinced we will reach those uh, 100 gigawatt. And when I look at our peers, that should make us one of the top five companies. Mm. Well, uh, to achieve all of that, um, uh, all of that transformation, it's going to cost you, according to your website anyway, $60 billion in renewable projects uh, over the next decade. So how are you proposing to finance those projects? You know, the, the renewable energy uh, has one specificity is that um, there are long-term projects with long-term revenue and they can be financed largely with, uh, with debt. So if you take the usual ratio of 70% um, of debt uh, and 30% of capital, the 60 billion uh, become, uh, become uh, 18, uh, 18 billion. 18 billion over, uh, over uh, 10 years, you are speaking about 1.8 billion of investment per year, and, uh, which is easy to finance for total. And the truth is that we have decided to, uh, to spend between uh, uh, around 25% of our capex per year. Our capex is, uh, is uh, in the range of 13 to 16. So you see between three and 3.5 billion of, uh, of renewable per, uh, per year. Uh, so we've got the cash to uh, clearly to finance that, that growth and actually uh, we could uh, even perhaps go uh, a bit further, given yeah. uh, given, uh, given our uh, financial uh, financial mean. And yeah. obviously, all that was planned in uh, in an environment that, that. at uh, fifty or sixty dollars per barrel. So, um, so so clearly, with the current environment, uh, we don't have any problem to finance that uh, that program. Oh well, that'll keep the accountants happy. Uh, now you, you mentioned the uh, a little bit of the geographical spread. Uh, you, I think you said fifty countries. Um, so obviously uh, the spread reaches outside France and outside Europe too. Yes, for sure. Uh, if I look at our largest country uh, in terms of potential of development, uh, you have obviously uh, the US. The US is a, is a big country for, uh, for renewable energy. You have India, where we have a partnership with, uh, with Adani uh, Group uh, for our joint JV, uh, Anadi Green Energy Limited. Uh, then you have, obviously, uh, Europe with uh, Spain, France, 
and uh, and uh, and we want to develop further in Germany, uh, obviously in UK with uh, with offshore wind. You have Asia. We are already in Taiwan uh, in offshore wind. Uh, we have concession in uh, in Korea. We have project uh, in Japan as well and uh, and uh, and China and, uh, and and there are things to uh, to be yeah. done in, in Australia. What what we globally see is that uh, all the world is moving to uh, to renewable energy. Yes, exactly right. Um, and and then it's 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 really. Uh, Based on our capacity to bring value on those uh, on those various uh, geographies, what you could say is that there is one one region missing, which is Africa, where uh, we are very strong. We are number one on uh, upstream and downstream today in Africa. That's true because uh, to develop renewable, you need a strong grid, uh, and that's not always the case in uh, in uh, in Africa. But we are convinced that it will come. At the later stage, and uh, and uh, and we uh, clearly want to uh, to develop as well in this region when uh, when yes. the industry is mature to do so. Of course, uh, you're looking at 100 gigawatts of renewable energy in eight years' time. How will other electrical services be delivered in the major industrial areas: batteries, hydrogen, or gas plants? So batteries, batteries, it's clearly a key question because uh, one of the drawbacks of uh, renewable energy is intermittency and one way to cope with that is, uh, is batteries. The other solution is as well uh, uh, gas, gas, gas plant, uh, gas power plant, CCGTs, uh, because they can be dispatched whenever you want and they are a good uh, uh, add-on to the renewable energy. Uh, and because it's a less uh, CO2 emissive for all the uh, uh, fossil fuel power, power plant. So uh, clearly, with our development on renewable, uh, we want to develop as well battery and, uh, and, and CCGT depending on the, on the market. Um, then hydrogen. Hydrogen is a, it's a different game. Um, and for hydrogen, our strategy, I would say, is two uh, two two main axes. The first one is uh, we are an off-taker of hydrogen today for our refinery, with 300,000 kT of consumption, and we want to decarbonize that. So to be able to produce green hydrogen for our own consumption, and that by uh, by 2030. And then we have large projects uh, on which we are working. Elsewhere in the world to be uh, to be able to produce uh, green hydrogen and export it to uh, to 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 consumer, but that that only makes sense if it's done at scale. And to some extent, you could compare the future hydrogen industry to uh, to what was LNG back in the yes in the, in the 60s. Of course, uh, yeah, that, that's right. That's in terms of the takeoff. Uh, that's something. Uh, if, if if it happens like that, then we clearly want to be part of that game. Yeah, stand by for takeoff. Uh, you mentioned hydrogen. Um, will will you be developing carbon capture technology in line with hydrogen development? Alors, you know, for hydrogen, there are two types of hydrogen. You have the green hydrogen, where uh, it's uh, it's produced uh, with electron coming from uh, renewable energy. So there is a good fit with. Uh, our solar and wind uh, development. And then you have the blue hydrogen, which is produced uh, from gas. But then the, the CO2, which is produced uh, uh, during the, the, the production of the hydrogen, has to be stored. Um, and so, yes, the answer is uh, we want to develop as well uh, 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 carbon storage uh, uh, facilities. Obviously, to produce uh, hydrogen, but as well to store our own emission, uh, to store our own emission when we have uh, emission. So it could be uh, CO2 emission coming from uh, LNG plant, for example, or, uh, or our refinery. That's one aspect. But beyond that, we want as well to be able to provide that services to our customer uh, and to be able to uh, 
to offer to our customers the, the possibility to store uh, their, uh, their uh, CO2. Yeah. Not necessary to capture it because it depends uh, on uh, which industry you are trying to uh, to address, but at least to be able to take that CO2 and to store it. And uh, <coughs> we are, for example, partner in the project called uh, Northern Light in uh, Norway, where there is a, a, a program to uh, to transport and store the CO2 uh, in uh, under the seabed uh, in Norway. Okay, um, you're not going to forget oil and gas, though. Um, so, so um, you'll, you'll keep investing in oil and gas in this race to renewables. Yeah, for sure. It's not. Uh, it's not uh, or it's and. Uh, <laughs> you will need uh, oil and gas for uh, many decades to go, and uh, even in all the the, the, the scenario uh, neutral. Uh, Neutral CO2 scenario in 2050, you still have a production uh, uh, of oil, uh, of oil and gas, and so we want to be part of uh, of that. So, uh, on fair. oil, yeah. that means to focus on uh, uh, the low cost uh, oil, and that's why all the strategy uh, of Total Energy has been to uh, to focus on Middle East uh, in the last uh, seven eight years and on uh, Deep offshore, but uh, deep offshore with size that we 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 found in Brazil. So uh, oil, uh, yes for sure. And when it comes to gas, gas is a transition fuel. Uh, it's the fuel of the transition of the energy transition because, as we say, it's at the best fuel to go with renewable energy uh, to, to to as an add-on to. Uh, mitigate the problem of intermittency in the most uh, low CO2 emission uh, uh, way. So uh, we want as well to develop very much uh, gas and especially LNG because uh, we are convinced that LNG is a transition fuel. Yeah, exactly. Um, just, just a quick uh, question. Um, uh, Stefan, I mean, we made or you made a remark earlier about security of supply and then price also key. Just looking at the Ukraine situation, uh, prices in the short term, what's going to happen to gas prices? Are they continue? Are they going to continue to go up? Today, the gas price is uh, is high because there is obviously uh, some risk about uh, the the supplies that are that are factored in. Um, the truth is that what, what we see is that uh, the storage, the gas storage situation in Europe now is better than it was uh, last year at the same uh, at the same time, and you see as well that the uh, gas price, high gas price, has led to uh, a decrease of the consumption in Asia. So I would say that the, the fundamentals of the market. Uh, do not justify uh, the, the, that, that gas price today. But on the other hand, you have a large incertitude due to the, to the Ukraine situation. And so uh, 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 a risk of premium, which is embedded in, uh, in the gas price. Honestly, uh, this evolution will, uh, will clearly depend on what, uh, what is happening in Ukraine. And uh, and that's anybody's guess. So uh, yeah, I fear I'm not I'm not I'm not completely able to answer your question. No, no, I understand completely. Well, now, now what what is clear is that uh, we 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 consider that uh, gas is probably going to remain at a high level for for a while. Should we say the foreseeable future? Um, now, uh, we mentioned, uh, and you mentioned too, uh, the decades to come, the use of fossil fuels. Uh, at the moment, the energy industry is under intense scrutiny. Uh, as large oil and gas companies move towards a more climate change uh, stance, or at least the targets, has the industry gained more respect in some, con uh, some quarters? And would you recommend young graduates to think about joining energy companies? Yes, I, I, I would because uh, energy is life, and so uh, uh, if you 
you are looking for a purpose to what you are doing when you go to work, uh, I mean, providing energy, I, uh, it's for me uh, among, uh, among the, the, the various uh, industries that are really interesting. Uh, like mobility, like data, uh, you name it. But uh, so then the question is uh, how you you do it, and uh, and uh, when we transform ourselves from total to total energies, it's as well for our future employees to say at the end of the day, we are not only an oil and gas company; we are a broad energy company, and our mission is to provide energy and the yeah. best energy possible. And that change, we see it for us, but uh, uh, we, we, we am glad to see that our partner, uh, Qatar, uh, Qatar Petroleum, has rebranded itself, uh, Qatar Energy. And we, we have many talks with, uh, with Saad al kabi the, the, the minister and CEO of, uh, of Qatar Energy now. And he, they are embarking exactly in the same, uh, in the same change. And honestly, we, we have a few European peer doing doing the same. So so here what is interesting is that we see our European peer, we see uh, some of the national oil companies starting by Qatar Energy moving in that direction. And we are convinced it's the right direction. That's not necessarily shared by uh, by others, <coughs> notably in the in the US. But uh, at least when it comes to uh, to to attracting young talent, uh, uh, I'm sure that we are right to do what we are doing. And to conclude this this interview, please, um, Thetham, give me your thoughts on the uh, following question: When will France achieve net zero CO2 emissions? You know, the ambition is 2050, and our ambition is, is 2050 with, uh, with society. Um, then, uh, then 2050, you could say it's in 30 years, so uh, it's, uh, we will see what, what we want to do, at least on our side, uh, is to work so that uh, the objective we fix ourselves for 2030 are consistent with that uh, with that ambition and, uh, and put us in a situation where if we achieve what we say, the 100 gigawatt, uh, what we do in terms of technology, what we invest on, uh, on hydrogen and so on, we would clearly be in a situation to uh, to 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 move on and go towards that objective in, in 2050 um, with, with society. Now, we have to be clear. Energy is about production, but it is about co con consuming as well. Uh, and when you look at, the, at, at Glasgow, what was interesting is that we, people spend most of their time speaking about how to produce energy. But, but part of the answer is uh, on how uh, consumers are going to move. And uh, is the automobile industry move to electric and, uh, uh, or not? If uh, the airplane are moving to something else or not, that's our key because we, you, you, you can provide the best energy possible if the consumer don't follow you. Nothing's going to, to, to yeah. change. So uh, yes, I believe France will uh, will reach the 2050 uh, target of being neutral, like many other countries. But obviously, for that to happen, we have to do our work, and we are doing it. Um, um, I hope I've convinced you after 20 minutes. <laughs> but uh, but we will need as well to rely on uh, on the consumer, which yes. is uh, the other part of the of the challenge. All right, Stefan. Well, that's my last question, uh, Stefan Michel. On behalf of the Alatea Foundation, I'd like to thank you very much for providing all of those views and the analysis and describing your ambitions. And I know our listeners will be fascinated to hear your perspective. The Foundation uh, very much looks forward to speaking with you again in the future. Uh, thank you for listening. Be sure to keep up to date with all the Alatea Foundation's work by following us on Twitter and YouTube. Stefan, thanks again. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Sir.